makes a sequel a great sequel? Simple question, but turns out there's not a simple answer. And if there was one, games like Super Metroid and Mega Man 2 and Super Mario Bros. 3 would probably be more common. I mean, what do those games have that hundreds and hundreds of forgettable sequels don't? What did Yoshi's Island do that Yoshi's New Island doesn't? Of course, to be fair, I've never really considered Yoshi's Island a sequel. I know it says Super Mario World 2 right on the cartridge, but uh, come on. To me, that always seemed like more of a sales tactic than a description of Yoshi's Island. That game was very much its own thing, a whole different kind of platforming experience. And in retrospect, that's one of the reasons we fell in love with Yoshi's Island. It was so different, and it was so unique. But for this sequel to that not really a sequel, that's not really the case. Don't let the name fool you. There's nothing new about Yoshi's New Island. Yet another huge release for a system that seems to be getting nothing but huge releases, Yoshi's New Island comes to the 3DS almost 20 years after the Super NES original. I guess time flies when you're pooping eggs. But obviously Yoshi's Island was a classic, widely considered not only one of the best Super Nintendo games ever, but also one of the best platformers ever, and it gave Yoshi his own series of games. Games that, while good, have never been able to match the quality of the original. And even though it matches everything else from the original, neither does Yoshi's New Island. So our story begins with a stork, same as Yoshi's Island. And actually, it's also the same stork from Yoshi's Island. And ironically, he's having flashbacks to Yoshi's Island. Funny, because so am I. He's delivering the same babies uh, against what appears to be the same sky and weather conditions when the same enemy attacks with what appears to be the same plan. Kidnap baby Mario and baby Luigi. I mean, I'm all for nostalgia, but this is, this is kind of ridiculous. Now, of course, story doesn't really matter in a game like this, but it is indicative of the design approach as well. In terms of its gameplay, Yoshi's New Island is virtually identical to Yoshi's Island. But I mean, being identical to one of the best platformers ever, it's not really the worst thing. And to be fair, Yoshi's New Island is a very good platformer. I'm just, I'm not sure it's a very good sequel. So you play as Yoshi, and Yoshi, and Yoshi, and Yoshi. They're transporting baby Mario like a relay system from level to level. You platform through six gorgeous worlds, all the while trying to keep baby Mario safe. If an enemy knocks him off your back, and you don't get him before time runs out, well, it's a Koopa kidnapping. It's the same mechanic that made Yoshi's Island so refreshingly different and it's applied to the same awesome platforming and level design. Yoshi can flutter to extend his jumps, he can turn enemies into eggs and throw them like missiles. And it's a gameplay experience all its own, and it's as awesome now as it ever was. And you know, one thing Nintendo does better than anyone else is control. Controlling this game is just a dream. It's tight, it's responsive, you never have clunky controls in a Nintendo platformer. And Yoshi's New Island is no exception. It plays great. I mean, just moving is fun, let alone navigating the awesome level design and finding all the collectibles. So, obviously, Yoshi's New Island is a fantastic platformer, but again, it, it's also a very familiar platformer. Really, it hasn't added much to the original game, and what it has added are the game's weakest elements. You can throw these giant eggs, right, which seems great, but they're never integral to the gameplay. They're just set moments where you use them. So far from being the raccoon leaf, it's more like Kuribo's shoe. <laughs> And the vehicles are back. In some levels, there are sections where Yoshi turns into a helicopter or even a jackhammer. And these are some of the most memorable parts of the original. But the change here is that they're controlled with motion. And by controlled, I mean barely controlled. And that brings those flawless controls to a sudden halt. You actually start to dread the vehicle sections, which, I mean, that's a huge disappointment for fans of the original. 
But actually, another slight disappointment is the presentation. It scraps the hand-drawn look of the original for this almost claymation-like style. And don't get me wrong, it's a gorgeous game. It's actually like a combination of Yoshi's Island and Yoshi's Story visually. But again, compared to the original, it just falls short, and especially in terms of the music. What? You know, this is actually kind of a tough game to review. If it were any other series, with any other characters, people would call this one of the year's best 3DS games. But when you set a standard as high as Yoshi's Island, comparisons are inevitable. And this otherwise awesome platformer still doesn't live up to them. What makes a great sequel? I guess there are some eggs not even Yoshi can crack. What?